If you are a saxophone player with a thin or muffled sound and you've been trying to figure out how to fix that, then this is the video that you have been waiting for. My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about how to get a big fat tone on the saxophone. Before we start the tutorial, I would like to take a minute to thank all of the saxophone players out there who have been supporting my YouTube channel for the last three or four years. I've been doing tutorials for about that long and the support has been amazing. The feedback's been great. It's been awesome to connect with so many different saxophone players. Uh, it's just been a dream. So I'm on the cusp of hitting a really big milestone in subscriber numbers. That number is 50,000. That's crazy, 50,000 subscribers. So uh, if you watch my videos and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you clicked that button, gave me a thumbs up, and then clicked the bell for notifications. Again, thank you so much for all of the support on my YouTube page. All right, let's talk about how to get a big fat sound on the saxophone. And the good news is it's a lot easier than you think. There are really only two big variables. But before we talk about the variables, we need to talk about your embouchure or the placement of your mouth on the mouthpiece. That is super important. And that is a problem that I see all of the time with students. Oftentimes when they have a small muffled kind of whiny sound, it's because they're not taking in enough mouthpiece. So if you look at your mouthpiece and you turn it to the side and you close one eye, I know that's a lot of instructions. So you wanna have it on the side, close one eye. You can see where the reed hits the mouthpiece. For me, that is right there. That is where you want your bottom lip. So you want your bottom lip there. And then of course your top teeth right on top. So if you take in that much mouthpiece right there, you're gonna have that much reed vibrating. And if that much reed vibrates, it's gonna sound really good. If you take in a too little mouthpiece, which isn't that big of a movement, if I just come down a little bit, you can see that I have a lot less reed vibrating. When I have lot, a lot, that much less reed vibrating, my tone is gonna be a lot smaller and a lot more muffled. So I'm gonna do a couple playing examples. I'm gonna do it with the correct amount of mouthpiece, and then I'll do it with not enough mouthpiece. And you'll hear that it makes a really big difference. So here is an example with me playing with the correct amount of mouthpiece. As you can hear when I play like that, I have a really big full sound. Now I'm gonna play the exact same example, but this time I'm gonna take in less mouthpiece and you're gonna hear how muffled my sound gets. Now, when I played that example, I was using the exact same amount of air, but because I was taking in less mouthpiece, less of the reed was vibrating, and because less, and because less of the reed was vibrating, my sound was much smaller and a whole lot more muffled. So you wanna make sure that you're taking in the right amount of mouthpiece. So you might be thinking, why not take in more mouthpiece so you have even more reed vibrating? The reason for that is because when you have a whole bunch of reed vibrating, you can't control it and it sounds terrible. I mean, awful. So this isn't that big of a problem because you can tell that it doesn't sound really good right away. So not many people have this problem where they're taking in too much. But here is an example of taking in too much mouthpiece. This is gonna sound awful. Like this is gonna be painful. This is gonna be painful. All right, too much mouthpiece. That hurts, that hurts. So if you take in too much mouthpiece, you can't control the reed vibration at all. So you're gonna get a really awful sound. So you wanna make sure that you're taking in the exact perfect amount of mouthpiece, and that is where the reed hits the mouthpiece. All right, now that we've talked about embouchure, let's talk about how the saxophone makes sound. If you want a bigger sound, you need to completely understand how you are making that sound. So you are blowing air from your lungs, the airstream hits your reed and the reed vibrates. So that gives us two main variables. The first one is how much air you're putting in the saxophone. And the second one is how fast your reed is vibrating. Let's start off by talking about how much air you're putting into the saxophone. 
In the saxophone world, we call that breath support. Breath support. So that means supporting the air or the airstream that you are putting into your saxophone. Now, there are a couple of things that we wanna talk about when it comes to breath support that is gonna make your saxophone sound a whole lot better and definitely bigger and more full. The first thing is that you want a steady airstream. In other words, you want that air moving at a steady speed and a steady pattern. You don't want it fluctuating. You don't want it speeding up and slowing down. You don't want warbles and variations in your airstream. So that's why saxophone teachers talk so much about long tones, because that is how you can fix your breath support and your airstream and get it really, really steady. You can do that with overtones as well. So this is what a steady airstream sounds like. Notice when I played that long tone, the note was very stable, very steady. There were no warbles in it. It wasn't going in and out of tune. It wasn't getting louder and softer. It was just a really flat, not flat as in pitch, but flat as in no variation. It's just a very flat tone with really, really steady breath support. Now, if I didn't have steady breath support, this is what it would sound like. That kind of sounds like a bee swarming around. So what is happening is my airstream is not supported, so I'm getting all these warbles and disruptions in them. That's why you really wanna focus on your breath support so that you have a really steady stream of air going into your saxophone. That is gonna give you a nice big full sound. The more you can control your breath support and your airstream, the better everything you play on the saxophone is gonna sound. If you'd like to get a whole lot better at the basics of the saxophone, learning tone and technique and learning all kinds of tips and tricks, then I'd like to invite you to come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I have pathway courses that teach you step by step everything you need to work on for no matter what level of saxophone player you are. So if you're just starting out, there's a beginner pathway that takes you from the very beginning. If, you're, if you've been playing for a little bit, but you still need some work on the basics, I have an early intermediate pathway that is gonna help you learn a whole bunch of songs and get your tone on point, learn some scales, learn some theory. And then if you are an intermediate saxophone player, you are absolutely gonna love the saxophone school. There are so many lessons that are focused on the intermediate sax player that you just won't find a better learning experience anywhere. So if you'd like to check the sax school out, I will leave a link in the video description below. The first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to breath support is how much air you take in. The amount of air you take in is gonna have a direct result in the pressure of the air that's going out. So you might think if you want a really, really big sound, you're gonna to need to take in a lot of air. So you can take in a really big breath. That actually does not work very well. So I'm gonna do a little demonstration and you'll see why right away. So I'm gonna take in a really big breath of air. When I do that, there is a ton of pressure. That air just wants to come out because I'm so filled up. My lungs are so filled up. I just wanna push the air out. So then when I push the air out, I can't really control it. When I do that, you might have been able to hear it. I'm not sure if my microphone picked it up, but there's just all this like explosion sounding in the beginning of it because the air is trying to escape. Try doing that right now. Take in a really big breath of air and hold it and you're gonna feel all of the pressure. So what you wanna do is take in a normal size uh, breath of air, maybe a little bit more than normal, you wanna fill up your lungs, but not take in a huge amount of air. When you do that, you're not gonna feel nearly as much pressure. I could hold that all day. Well, at least until I need to breathe again. But there's not that much pressure, so I can control it really easily. So if I take in that amount of air and then I push it out, I can control the amount of air that's going out. Obviously, you can't hear the air that is blowing out right now, but it's in a very steady stream and I have complete control over it because I'm not over expanding my lungs and taking in too much air and trying to deal with all of the extra air that I have. So you don't need to take in a gigantic breath of air. You want a little bit bigger than a normal breath of air and you wanna make sure that you're, that you're controlling it when you push it out. Now let's talk about something else that is very, very, very important. 
and that is breathing from your diaphragm. When you play a wind instrument, you're always going to hear the teachers that you are dealing with or the videos that you're watching, people talking about breathing from your diaphragm. And all that means is you don't want to just think about filling up your chest. You don't just want, you don't want your chest sticking out. You want your uh, diaphragm, which is down here. You want this to press out when you take your breath. So you want your belly to stick out and your diaphragm. So there's a really easy way to test that. And that is just when you take a breath, push in right here and make sure your belly is coming out. If your belly doesn't come out, you are not breathing from your diaphragm. And if you're not breathing from your diaphragm, you're not going to have the correct amount of pressure to control your air. So when you breathe from your diaphragm, that is all about being able to control your airstream. Now, of course, when you breathe from your diaphragm, your chest is still going to open up some because your lungs are in your chest, but you want to concentrate on your stomach popping out when you take that breath. So it's really easy on the saxophone because we only need one hand to play several notes. So if you play a G and push on your stomach, I can feel my diaphragm pushing out. So you want to concentrate on breathing from your diaphragm. Now, as I said before, a great way to practice this is with long tones. Long tones may not be the most fun thing to practice, but you can definitely greatly improve your tone with long tones because you're going to steady out that airstream. You're going to be able to control your breath support and you're really going to be able to focus in on the tone of your saxophone. And of course, you can also work on your intonation at the same time. So long tones can definitely be boring to practice, but I have several different strategies to practice them in my sax school that make it a lot more fun and a lot more interesting where you're working on several different things and it makes the long tones not quite as painful to practice. All right, so now we're taking in the right amount of mouthpiece. The breath support is good. We've got a really steady tone with no, no warbles. Let's talk about the next and last step, which is going to help you get a really big, fat, full saxophone sound. This step is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is get your airstream moving faster. So the faster your air goes into the saxophone, the more your reed vibrates. The more your reed vibrates, the bigger your sound is. It's that simple. Faster moving air makes your reed vibrate more. Your reed vibrating more gives you a more full, bigger, and fatter sound. So uh, let's talk about how to get your air moving faster. When I say a fast moving airstream, all I mean is that you're going to tighten your airstream so that the air you have is moving faster. So instead of having an airstream that is moving in a pattern that is this wide, you want to think about an airstream that is this wide but you're gonna have the same amount of air. So the air is gonna be moving a lot faster if it's in this size as opposed to this size. So you might be thinking to yourself, how do I tighten up my airstream? It's actually really, really, really easy. All you have to do is think about it. So if you make a circle out in front of your face and you blow into that circle, all you're doing is blowing into the middle of that circle. If you tighten the circle, you make it smaller, and then you blow into the smaller circle. All you have to do is tell yourself, have your brain tell the rest of your body to tighten up that airstream and aim for the center of the circle. Then when you tighten it even more, your airstream is going to tighten even more. All you have to do is concentrate on tightening up your airstream and blowing in the dead center of your mouthpiece. You want to pretend that there's a little coffee straw in the middle of your mouthpiece and you're trying to get all of your air into that little coffee straw in the center of your mouthpiece. Now, of course, you don't want to put a straw of any type in your mouthpiece, but you want to visualize that where you're not blowing on the edges of your mouthpiece or you're not just randomly blowing into your mouthpiece. You're aiming for the dead center and you're trying to get your airstream moving really fast towards that dead center. So if you think about a garden hose and you just hold the garden hose and it doesn't have a spigot, the water will just fall out right in front of you. But if you put your thumb on it, the same amount of water is trying to get out so it has to move faster so it squirts out further. It's the same idea with your airstream. If you can get the same amount of air that is moving in this pattern into this pattern, it's going to be moving a whole lot faster and a whole lot cleaner. And the faster and cleaner it's moving, the more your reed is going to vibrate. The more your reed vibrates, the bigger and more full your sound is going to be. 
Now, I have been playing with a really tight, fast moving Airstream most of my life. So for me to demonstrate not doing that is gonna be pretty tough, but I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna aim for just randomly blowing air into my saxophone, and you're gonna hear a difference between when my Airstream is really focused, going in the center, and when I'm just blowing randomly into my saxophone. Now I'm gonna focus my Airstream. When I focus my Airstream and aim for the dead center, everything sounds a whole lot more focused and my tone is much bigger and much more full. Who is one of your favorite saxophone players who has a big, fat, full, round tone and you can recognize their sound right away? Leave their name and a comment below. Now let's talk about something else that is really important to a big, fat, full sound, and that is dynamics. So if you just play loud all of the time, it doesn't sound big, fat, and full. It just sounds like someone's yelling at you. So you don't wanna just play loud and in your face all the time. You wanna make sure that you're using dynamics because the softer you play, the louder your louds are gonna sound. So you wanna have a dynamic range that is really big, not a really small dynamic range. The bigger your dynamic range is, the more full your sound is gonna be. So even though I'm playing a lot of softer notes in that melody, you can really hear how big and full my sound is because I have such a big dynamic range. Now, even when I'm playing soft, I still have a full sound. Now, one big mistake that early, intermediate, and beginner saxophone players make is when it comes to breath support and their air stream and all of that kind of stuff, they do a separate breath of air for each note. You would not talk like that. In other words, you wouldn't take a separate breath for every word that you say, so you definitely don't want to take a separate breath for every note that you play on the saxophone. So when it comes to getting a big, fat, full sound on the saxophone, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your mouth is in the correct place on the mouthpiece. The second thing you need to do is work on your breath support and make sure that you have a really steady airstream. And the third thing that you want to do is focus your airstream and get it going really fast, moving towards the center of your mouthpiece. If you do those three things, you're going to have a big, fat, full saxophone sound in no time at all. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School.